way. So how do you handle with your team, obviously, some of the challenges that maybe come with being number one? Yeah, well, I think the challenges for us is just, you know, going against Rutgers and, and playing a, a true road game with fans for the first time in a long time. I think that's more of a challenge than anything. Obviously, being ranked number one in the country is a, is a cool thing, but it can end, you know, pretty quickly um, if you don't play well. So we all know how tough it is to play on the road in the Big Ten. Which most of this team has never done. Correct. In a true traditional manner. Is that something that has to be managed at all or well it's not something like you can fix in a speech yeah. so it's not you're not going to give some rah-rah speech or like talk through it like you know you got to be able to to go through it and you got to be able to play um you know through some noise but if you play better and you don't turn the ball over and you, you know kind of stick to our rules defensively you're going to help yourself and we have guys that have played so we have seniors that have been in our program not like a lot of people in the country that have seniors that have you know transferred two or three times and so like it's we have you know three seniors Sasha's a fifth year obviously Eric and Travion are in their fourth year Isaiah Thompson's played he's in his you know, he's in his third year and our other guys are pretty talented players so you know you hope um, especially since our struggles against Iowa, you know, hope you know we have a little bit better awareness, a little bit more of a focus. How much pride do you take in being number one since you've been a part of this thing since right. the '80s? I mean, yeah. it's still got to make you feel great. Oh, it is great. It's great for our fans. It's great for our players. I think it helps your program and the recognition, especially from a recruiting standpoint, to say that you know these guys have really worked hard and put themselves at the top of college basketball at this time of the year. You're not at the top of the college basketball in the first weekend in February. That would, you know, that's obviously the goal for everybody. Um, but it is a good starting point and something that hopefully we can grow and have a lot more success this year. How do you keep these guys from getting the big head after all that? I mean, these are college kids right. here. Oh, you, you just practice and you hold them accountable. You know, we turned the ball over 17 times against Iowa. You know, we had two different um, times of the game with about three minutes to go in the first half, about 10 minutes to go in the game where we could have really separated ourselves, and we didn't. You got to give Iowa a lot of credit for that, but we still made some mistakes that had nothing to do with, with us just making mistakes and not concentrating. So um, we'll work on those things and try to get better and hold those guys accountable. So trying to use you know, the positives and build off of it, but also try to keep ourselves on edge um, by correcting some of our mistakes. What things do you need to do better against the press? How does that work? Yeah, yeah it's, it's hard to get, like, give one answer um, in theory, to uh, you know, a handful, you know, five to eight different, you know, mistakes that you made. A couple times it was guys doing things on the press that they weren't supposed to do, like um, not staying behind the ball in case a trap happens. So you got an outlet right there. Guys kind of cleared out a couple times, and it really put us in a bind. A couple times not coming to the ball and helping the ball handler. Other times the ball handler doing good things, but then just not being strong with the ball or not pass faking and freezing the defender's hands and then making the right pass. You know, we made some right plays, but you got to be able to pass and catch, you know, with those. And some of it was just fundamental. So um, we went over a lot of it yesterday. We watched film on it. Um, we worked on it in practice. We'll, we'll keep working on it and uh, hopefully get better. You said you wanted the final 10 minutes of the game to be a lesson. What yes. would that lesson be? Can you kind of articulate it? Yeah, I just did. Um, it's, it was really came down to the press, um, you know. But we had nine turnovers in the first half, and only one of them was due to the press. So it wasn't all those turnovers you see in the right. Iowa Illinois game last night. They turned those guys over right. too. So they they have, you know, good scheme, good athleticism, um, but more concentration than anything. You know, when when it gets down to it, did they make a couple nice plays on it? Yeah, but more of it was self inflicted. And uh, I, did, I didn't feel like I did a good job of preparing our guys, um, you know, Ford. I got to do a better job of helping them. Florida State is such a tough um, team to go against, especially mm -hmm. with their pressure and the way they play and what they do. And our guys did a pretty good job against them. And so now going to the next game, they did some things similar, but not, not exactly similar. And, and I just felt like we were in a, in, in a pretty good position because of our prep for Florida State. And I was wrong there. And I had to do a, I had to do a better job of just doing some breakdown things and helping our guys, you know, through what Iowa does. So, when you use the word lesson, you're talking more about X's and O's and not some big picture like them getting casual or comfortable up big. Or no, I would like say it was more casual and comfortable, and um, and not kind of following what we do at times. And like when they left the guy with the ball in a trap and they didn't stay behind him a couple of times, it was just, you know, it's kind of a cardinal rule when right. going against a trap. You don't leave your guy. You know, out to dry, and then a couple times when they trapped and we we isolated and cleared, 
when they once did trap, guys just stood back and didn't flash to the basketball. So, like I said earlier, it's hard to, to really conceptualize into one statement mm -hmm. because they're all kind of separate turnovers. But when they, you know, when they do something in terms of trapping you and you don't go and help the ball handler, it's, you know, that, that's obviously something that you know you should have like drilled on and got to. I just thought it was something that we would be prepared for because of our preparation for Florida State. Can you just kind of tell us about Rutgers? I know they're a little bit different than they've been years past. Yeah. Well, obviously, you know, Ron Harper is, is a really tough cover. They play him at the four, and uh, hmm. he really puts people in binds with his ability to break you down, uh, make tough threes, make open threes, play out of the mid post. Hmm. Um, they're, they're big guy, Cliff. Um, it's very athletic. You got to keep him off the glass. You got to stop him from getting angles. Um, it looks like Geo Baker's not playing, but um, you got to prepare for Geo Baker. He's a great shot maker. He's been a great player in our league, um, especially late in games. He's made some crucial plays. He's beat us a couple years ago with a big shot here in Mackey Arena. Um, and then they've taken a lot of other guys. McKay, he's a really good piece for them, very smart, knows how to play tough and they've taken a lot of new guys that they've come in that have, that have done a good job for them and kind of pieced everything together. Caleb McConnell's another guard that's been there for a couple years that's a good talented player that can play off the dribble um, but Steve's teams always play hard they always rebound they defend you know they're going to compete and that's a tough venue it's a very tough venue to play in like a lot of other venues in the Big Ten. I want to quickly ask you about the paint crew and having fans back in the stands right. and what it's like to see your players feed off of that yeah. energy? Well, it's great. We have a great environment. We have one of the best environments in college basketball. Um, but no, just having fans back in here cheering for you. Obviously, we're going to have the experience of going on the road now and somebody cheering against us, which will be new. Um, but it's been great. Our, our student section um, is fabulous. They camped out the other day, and we got great support from our fans.